Welcome back to the Catch Marks Sports Net Podcast. Man, I'm tongue tied today. Episode 27. We have uh, the man, the myth, the legend with us today, Mr. Cody Cater. Uh, joined with us also, Scott. What's up, Scotty? I'm here. You're here? Yeah. What's the matter with you? Oh, I'm good. You just- I probably got more sleep than you, though. No, probably not. I know you. You're a vampire. <laughs> yeah, he definitely didn't. How much did you get? Like two hours last night? Actually, I got a lot of sleep. I was going to get, I no. set my alarm for like 3 a.m. to get up and do some stuff. I shut it right back up. Why? Who sets their alarm for freaking 3 a.m.? Old people go to bed at like 9 or No, 10. you don't, no, though. You, you lie. Do, you get up at 6. I have been. Get up yeah, yeah, like half sleep. You you wake up like every hour. I don't sleep with one eye open or anything like that. No, but you wake up often. Yeah. Do Quite a bit. Not like a.m., Cody? <sighs> Not 3 a.m. I'm a 445 guy. <laughs> what is wrong with you guys? 445 every day. Mostly every day. What are day. you doing at 440? So, Zach's with us too, Zachary. It's oh, good to see you. Thanks. Appreciate it. I We miss you. Have you changed your mind yet? No. Maybe after. Look this. me in the eye. Have you changed your mind? No, not yet. Are you sure? Yeah. All right. All right. So you get up. I do you miss do you. 445. Though. I know you do. Well, we have throwing in the morning. We have football in the morning. So we're at like 615 in the morning. It's May. Nice. nice. Yeah, it's May, but we've got a you know we've got a champions lot of work to don't do. take time off, baby. But also champions. just getting into work and just you know settling in is is something that we look forward to as well. Champs mm-hmm. don't take time off. They don't. What would you, what, Whitehall Viking know? Never mind. I'm sorry. Listen, that was low. We can, can, we can go. There. We'll that talk different. Let's go there. Let's, 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 let's go there. Yeah. Let's talk, let's talk about like let's a talk about sport baseball. that I'm involved oh, in. I fired him off now, Cody. Yeah. Look at yeah. Hey, yeah. they're beating teams thirty-eight to one. Yeah. Yeah, let's not let's, let's not go that. there. <laughs> let's talk about that a little. Uh, what happened there? So for for <laughs> our listeners that don't know this, Whitehall uh, beat Muskegon thirty eight to one. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, how does that even happen? Yeah, right. Uh, by far the worst team I've ever seen. Let's we'll start out. We'll shut out there. You're uh, not n- no disrespect to them, you know whatsoever. Just don't didn't look like the kids had played a lot of baseball. Um, we were up thirty to zero after the second inning. Uh, and they had the opportunity to walk away. Um, and they didn't, and they didn't, uh, the, I mean like per the umpires, not like, you know, just leave the field. Like it was, we just, we discussed it and they, they wanted to continue to play and it was a weird situation. You know, I don't, we, we don't, we're not put in those positions very often in any sport, I would say, where it's like, do you, do you purposely start giving up outs do you purposely hand the other team a basketball do you purposely throw an interception i mean like you could apply it to any sport do you is it disrespectful to the game to do those kind of things i mean you've coached and played cody what do you do i want to know how they scored one run <laughs> yeah right that's a that's a fun that's a funnier story to be honest with you. how did that happen um so we're done, we were we were up 30 to zero they continued to play we continued to hit the ball just like there's no nothing crazy. We weren't, we weren't running it up. We were just playing baseball, and and then in the bottom half of the third inning, we <laughs> I'm not gonna say who somebody was pitching and hit a couple guys and walked a guy and we made a pitching change when we were up thirty thirty eight to zero because that's ridiculous that you can't oh, throw a strike. Didn't, I didn't even think about it like that, but that's a great question. Yeah, it was nuts. So we walked in a row. I think I have a JV baseball record at Montague. I hit like four people in a row, <laughs> like my freshman year. That is dumb. <laughs> there, yeah, there was still snow on the like the fences, and we were playing against Muskegon. That's oh, funny. Yeah, so Anthony Roots, grandpa, every time he shares the story it, about myself and my playing career, that's the first one that that's pops awesome. up. How long did mind. you play baseball for? I, I played t- my entire life, and then I stopped freshman year. How comes? I don't know. I think there's there are some other elements involved. I I really wanted to become faster. You know, like I think that was a big thing, more athletic, and you know, I still working I, on that. Still working on that. No, <laughs> I should be. Uh, but and then Pat was in the you know in the hallways and stuff, so he was kind of pushing you towards track if you're not going to do anything. Yeah, so I think that's uh, how I got involved with track. I did that for two years, but. My freshman year, I was yeah, I was on the mound. I think it was our first game, <laughs> and yeah, they I, I hit them all the way around. I think they were just sitting there taking them at that point because that was the only way they were going to get on base. Did you throw yeah. hard? I mean, were they paying for hit? Oh, hit? and it was cold too. So. <laughs> <laughs> just welts. Yeah, there's snow. Yeah, it was a first game from spring break or something. But That's I'm awesome. just beaming these these guys. But you know, it is what it is. Yeah, you know, it was a learning moment. But yeah, they went all the way around. <laughs> That's funny. 
That's too funny. So, Cody, what have you been up to, man? I, uh, you know, kind of earmuffs and blinders right now. I think ever since I got back from in January, we, we took a little bit of a, a spring break down there at Aruba. But other than that, it's been 24-7, 365, you know, uh, at, at this rate because – We've had we've had a, a lot of opportunity for uh, to get in front of these kids, you know, even on the weekend. So it's it's been busy, but living with my living with my parents in their basement. Oh, so Lord. that, but actually, it's kind of a blessing because I've you know had the opportunity now to just think about football, like just think about my job and, and this this rebuild. And so I think that part has actually been nice. I haven't had any house projects. I haven't thought about. Yeah. You know, anything in, in terms of, of living, it's just been, you know, kind of, you know, an, an autopilot in, in a sense of just it's football time. So those of you that don't know, a guy Cody took over as a head coach of Reese Puffer. Uh, Cody, it's good to have you back. I mean, like in the area, uh, um, I'm, and I'm sure DeCamp will give like stats, numbers, but when I was in school, Puffer was a powerhouse. I mm -hmm. mean, they, they, I believe it was 92 when Montague went to the state finals with Pat uh, Puffer was there that year. They had some really good programs. It, it kind of been down in the last few years. So um, I think uh, for them, this is a this is a hire where they're hoping they can they can strike a little magic and that you can uh, bring some bring some of that back. So um, what's your plan? <laughs> <laughs> what a question. Uh, uh, yeah, that's, that's tough. Um, I think yeah. I mean, there, there's a good tradition there. Um, I mean, but they haven't won a playoff game since '92. Uh, you know, when they, when they made that run. So yeah. I think the, the, the big thing right now is, is, you know, control the things that we can control right now in the spring and, and, and try to create a bunch of opportunities so that the kids can fail um, and, and still come back and, and feel confident going into the summer. And, you know, if they're missing right now in the spring, but maybe we can catch them and, and, and their attendance can be better in the summer. And, you know, so we can prepare for the fall. So I think that's kind of where we stand right now with with that plan and then you know i guess looking five six years down the road we re really want to make sure that we're we're continuously kind of putting a product out there that's going to allow us to get to the playoffs and uh you know if we can make the playoffs for you know a few years in a row then we can build off of those things and and kind of go from there but um it is it is you know a little bit of a rebuild here but they're 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 hungry the community's hungry um, you know, they've had a lot of things kind of not go their way, you know, the last, you know, I'd say five, 10 years, there's been a lot of question yeah. marks, you know, surrounding the football, uh, piece of piece of that community. So, um, we're, we're trying to kind of bring it all back together, but I mean, the plan right now is just really just developing the, the human being, just the full, the full human, uh, and, and really develop certain characteristics that we look at that can kind of make you successful. So that's where we're at right now. But um, but yeah, like I said before, earmuffs and blinders where nothing really is, 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 is else is going on in any of our, our lives. So, you know, the coaching staff, it seems like, like yeah. we're, we're just trying to make sure that we can kind of flip this thing. And if, if we do, it's going to be really, really fulfilling. So, I mean, what was it always your goal to come back? I mean, like, you know, like you had some opportunities, you went down South I mean, is this where you re where you want to be? I mean, I, I'm going to assume yes. But yeah, I want to hear. It. Yeah, uh, ultimately, this is where we wanted to be. I think when we went back, when we went down to Georgia, we were, um, you know, looking for that new, you know, exciting kind of experience in which we got, you know, in, in one yeah. year. Uh, but at the same time, I I didn't know if I wanted to be a head football coach, and I, I learned that through that experience that maybe I was more prepared than I thought I was, and and and, and it excited me to kind of think about owning my own program. So, um, after being down there, you know, realizing those things, I didn't really shop around up here at all. Um, until I got, until I got a phone call. So, I mean, I, I was, I was okay with being down there and, and I was having a cool experience and, you know, and I was kind of seeing a little bit of, you know, writing on the wall for, for, for that program and kind of where that program was going to be, be going. And I, I felt confident in it, but, uh, I knew if I always moved back, it'd probably be in the Grand Rapids area or something right. along those lines. But then the Lakeshore called, and that's ultimately where we want to be. And so that was it was kind of a, you know, no brainer in that sense. We thought we were going to make a couple more pit stops until we got back. Right. And then the one phone call came to kind of get us back, and it was a, it was a, I think a really good situation for, for what I'm looking in in a career. So so to, go ahead, Scott. No, I was going to say you've been. 
you know, you were down in Georgia and you've been around in the college game and whatnot. Yeah. Um, what is it about this area that makes it unique, makes it special, would you I, say? I think foundationally, like I, I'm from here. So I think the relationships that, that, that I've grown, uh, you know, through certain experiences has always kind of helped with that, but also just the Muskegon County. Like I, I really do believe that, you know, apart from, you know, some other counties, but the South Georgia area, you know, enjoys their football, enjoys their, uh, uh, you know, athletics. And, and in part, because like, there's not a ton of college athletics or professional athletics going on around here. So there's a lot of pride in, in what we, in what our community or what our, you know, school programs, you know, put out there on Friday nights or, you know, you know, on other playing surfaces. So I think that's what always has brought me back to Muskegon County was just the fact that, you know, they enjoy their football, they take it serious, um, but they're really prideful, uh, you know, from community to community to community. I mean, I've heard this previously that, you know, why aren't we all under, you know, one ISD and it's all just Muskegon County schools? Well, I think football plays a part in that. You know, yeah. obviously I'm biased, but... Uh, everyone wants autonomy, I think. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, everyone wants their own community to kind of root for and, mm-hmm. and go to on Friday nights and, and support. So, um, you know, I feel like that's that's there's a lot of pride here in Muskegon County. And, and I obviously had a great experience with with high school football, you know, in Montague. So uh, I think that, that that helps my, you know, I guess just my foundation of, of why I wanted to be back. Well, yeah. according, according to one of the Collins boys, you played on the second, third best team ever at Montague. So <laughs> went, uh, do you want to talk right about where that? I wanted to go yeah. with this too, since we're talking about Montague. You went want to right talk about that a little bit, Cody? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're in the, they're in the conversation. Uh, 20, you know, the 2020 boys, uh, I'll give it to them. They're in the conversation. I said, you know, welcome to the conversation at least, but that doesn't make you, you know, but that doesn't make you one of the best, um, you know, or, or the best. It does make you one of the best, but yeah. So we, we, you know, I, I like that conversation. You yeah. know, they, they did a good job, but there's some teams out there that didn't win one. And I know that always comes back down to the table that, well, he didn't win one, but that were you know, pretty good, pretty good, and more talented, and maybe uh, we didn't want to yeah. go against those guys, you know. Yeah. But uh, the '09 team, I mean, the stats don't lie. Uh, you know, that was that was a pretty pretty special team, and and to do it back to back, you know, was a tough was it, it will just be a tough mark to beat. But I'll give it to the 2020 boys. I mean, those guys uh, worked their butt off, and you know, they they were guys that I, I'm so close with and just high character people that are going to do really good things. And, we'll, we'll have to have know, Drew in, on, in here one time and see, see what he thinks. Yeah, but no, he probably, to, he so, really knows. So put yourself in the 2020 guys, make an argument for why they would be the better team. Like what, what are, what do you think? Why they, they had, yeah. a, they had a better You need to argue for it. <laughs> 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 that, that, was, that was easy. You walked, Cody. Me, you walked me right into <laughs> that, that one. That, was, that one was too easy. Um, <laughs> but no, that honestly, I mean, funny. they they had they had some size. Uh, Who you did know, you just diss, by the way? Who was your OC? In, uh, I think Pat. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, with signal the plays on a on a wristband. Um, awesome. <laughs> but but yeah, that uh you know, it was it was it was good times. I mean those guys they had some size up front that maybe we didn't that we didn't have. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean like Hayden McDonald and Walker Martin and yeah. Booth, those those guys in the inside yeah, those big anchors are yeah are pretty good size and those their the tackles were pretty athletic too. So that offensive line just by itself is hey, you guys had in oh nine you guys had a crazy a crazy old line though too, oh, didn't oh, you? Oh nine we we yeah but I mean hey Zeus uh Aguilar was a center and I think he was probably like a buck seventy. Yeah, buck seventy five but pound for pound. I mean that dude yeah. that dude could probably play what about like any of those guys. Kyle Eilers was left, left Gillish tackle, and, and he was Putnam. Like, yeah, two thirty five. Putnam was a year before in 08. Okay. Um and then Mike McClellan was like two twenty five, two thirty five. Yeah, but I mean um, Walker, you're talking like Walker's like, you know, they're pushing three bills. Like Hayden's yeah. pushing three mm-hmm. bills. Like yeah. you know, there's just nothing and strong and athletic. Yeah. yeah and then oh nine we I mean we could have countered that with our D line. Like our guys were pretty we were, had we had big boys like uh, Noah and, and, uh, and, uh, Chen, those guys were, yeah. you know, I think, uh, Fairfield from Ravana called in the newspaper, called them like small, like baby bulls or something like that. Like it was a pretty cool statement. Like we're, that we're trying to figure out how to, you know, how to run inside the tackles <laughs> yeah. and they got small baby bulls or something, That's you know, funny. uh, in there. So, I mean, we, we had some size to counter that, but the O-line was, was 
pretty good in 2020. And then, you know, Drew was obviously very talented, smart, you know, only threw like two picks. I think I threw like nine or yeah. 10, um, threw for a lot more yards, but, um, <laughs> but, but it was one of those, it was one of those deals though, that, you know, Drew, I mean, wasn't going to turn the ball over. I mean, we had like four fumbles that year or three fumbles all yeah. together and like two, two, I mean, it was a, a ridiculous stat out there with, with that. So, I mean, they weren't going to lose the game. You yeah, know, he, like he they, ran they're going to make well. you beat you, you know, mm. so he ran pretty well too, but different than you. Yeah. Does he, that make sense? Like, he was, he was, he's a lot stronger than I was yeah. and, and he was able to kind of always fall forward and yeah, like he was, he was a really, really good, you yeah. know, uh, quarterback now that I've moved around a little bit and, you know, I, I just, yeah, yeah. I just kind of been inside those walls where I'm just training, training, training these guys. But now that I'm kind of looking around, I'm like, man, he had a lot of intangibles too that you just wish all yeah. of your kids did. Well, one yeah. of the elements they had to overcome too was COVID, you know, yeah. navigating yeah, that. That's true. Yeah. Starts the stops, all that stuff. Yeah. Not saying that makes them better than 09 or whatever, but it's one more factor that they had right. to overcome. Right. Yeah. I mean, we had it, we had to go, we had to do the back to back deal, you know, where we had a lot of, you know, a lot of press and, you know, that brought on anxiety and then brought on a little bit of, you know, you know, some egos that, that, that floated around, but, you know, the 2020 dudes, they had to take on maybe not even completing their year. So there's, uh, you know, I think, yeah, you, yeah there's those, a big are, those are toss ups. And they was play, it, they yeah, play in the cold, too. Right. Like, yeah, I mean, like yeah. real cold. Was so. there yeah. a sense of relief when you get to Ford Field because you're like, we got here just because you didn't know if you're yeah. going to get here because well, you don't know if the season your was going to happen. You're COVID testing, too. Yeah. So as you're COVID testing two to three times a week, I mean, you're you're talking about getting on a bus and going to Ford Field and you're COVID testing. Like, what if your test, you know, shows mm, one? Yeah. What, if Drew, all what if Drew comes back? Yeah, so positive, you talk yeah. about a sense of relief when we, if we find out everyone's good to go and mm -hmm. even coaches, too, are like, wow, like, I can't believe, like, it's come to this and we probably aren't putting a lot of thought into it just because we're so focused on the, the game. You know, and then we go and COVID test and now that brings on a whole different type of anxiety of that you might not be able to, you know, play in the game. So that was that even that brought an element, you know, into that, you know, second run into the into the finals. I just remember games that year in the playoffs, like at Catholic, for instance, after the game. All right, everybody, COVID copter. Right. You know, putting their arms out. Oh, yeah. So they kept their, you know, right. their distance, yeah. your social distancing. Because it's so tough because, I mean, you look at teams, I mean, just in general, and there's there's sports psychologists out there that count the amount of times that a team high fives and, 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 and how well they compete compared to a team that doesn't have proximity, that doesn't high five. And now we're asking teams to go get out of the way, you know, don't even be don't around. Touch yeah, and, and there's yeah. And teams and proximity go hand in hand. And, you know, you're trying to figure, you're trying to, figure out a way to, you know, still stay safe and, and, and those things and, you know, have fun with it. But yeah, the COVID copter, that was, that was, yeah, that, that brought back a good memory mm -hmm. over there at Catholic. That, yeah. that was so good Cody, you know, you talked a little bit about the back to back and, um, egos that could get there. Tell me a little bit about how, uh, how your family helped you with, with just being the person that you are. And, and the reason I bring up egos is because I, I, I know your brothers, right? Like, right. <laughs> um, t talk a little bit about how they've been key to your success. Yeah. I, I think, I mean, I grew up a Montague kid, man. Like I grew up playing, you know, playing with the McDonald's, you know, little action figures and toys in the, in the stands watching my brothers, uh, play like my, my oldest brother, Derek, he, he graduated of 99. So he's 10 years older than I am. And he, you know, he played in a lot of, you know, a lot of different, all three sports. Yep. So we were always at games. And, and then my other brother, Kyle, he's a, he's a graduate of all three. And so he, you know, those guys were a bit older than me. So I was always the little guy, you know, trying to compete with those guys. I would go to all the open gyms and, and shoot around off to the side. And I couldn't play in them until I was in sixth grade. So, you know, that was a deal. Like, why is there a mark in sixth grade? Like you guys need an extra, like, <laughs> let me, let me get in there. Did they hold steady play. on that? We, oh, yeah. We've had some controversy yeah. this last yeah. year with some of our open gyms. So like, Oh, they held, yeah, they held steady on that. They, they would, they would rather lose a number than, you know, have this kid come in and, and ruin this game, ruin yeah. this flow. So, you know, that was a thing, but they were always bringing me around wherever they, you know, wherever they were going, I was a part of it. And, you know, and if I ever got a little bit of confident or cocky at home uh, with even with my friends that were over, like playing one on one in basketball, my my brothers 
would recognize that and and make sure that they would humble me real quick. <laughs> Knock you down um, a level. They, yep. I bet they still yep. do too. Yep. Yeah, they yeah. try to. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> they, they try, try to. to. Um, you know, the golf game's getting better. Is know? it? Yeah. So, I mean, that's the you know one thing those two had on me that it was just yeah, it was embarrassing to go out there with those guys. Um, yeah, but yeah, so I mean, my family, my my mom and my dad too. I mean, they've been incredibly supportive. Yeah. Uh, just with sport and in, in, in general or, or really whatever we're we're interested in and you know they even would support the girls basketball games i mean they've never went to a girls basketball game probably ever you know they had three boys and then when i was a coach they started supporting really you know a, a ton towards the the tail end there so um they've been really supportive but also you know there was an expectation and there's a standard at that kitchen table and I think that's one thing that I'll always be grateful for because they they were going to hold me to that, uh, both of them. And you know that that's the, that's the piece of it. And I think going through two other boys, they had a, a good idea of you know how to help uh, me along with some things because I mean there was I'd be in fifth sixth grade and I would cry all the way home from Muskegon, you know if we lost a basketball game and I couldn't stand it. And my dad was the worst coach and my my dad should have played me more, or, you know, gave me more shots oh, yeah. or whatever that is, you know, and I would, and I always had something to say back and I, that still hurts me today. But, uh, <laughs> and I think that was, that was something that, you know, I learned and, you know, through that and my dad, you know, my mom's just kind of like, man, like, I just, I can't wait for basketball season to be over with. Like, you, you don't get to act this way. You know, my dad's like, don't say that. Like, you're going to take the competitiveness right away from him. Yeah. You know, he, he should be crying. He like, he played poorly. Like, you know, like, <laughs> you know, like he, he well, should Warren want never did that to you. No, no. no. <laughs> you know, so it was one of those things where it's a good balance and, and, but the standard and expectation was set high for, for us. So it was, a uh, you know, it was a lot of fun kind of looking back on it, but they, yeah, they pushed us in whatever direction that we, you know, we thought that we were pretty skilled at. So, so it, was, it was good. I think we're, we're all like, we talk about the West Michigan conference and where we're from and like uh, all of these towns, our stories are kind of interwoven in the town you kind of come from, right? right? It doesn't matter who you are, when you came from there. So um, talk a little bit about leaving and, and how hard that was to, to, I mean, you're, you're not just, it, it's, it's a little different. I think when you yeah. come from a small town, right? Like that right. Auto- you're, you're tied to the place in a sense. And so talk a little bit about yeah, that. Yeah, this like, is, this is home. I mean, I think that's the, the piece, like when you turn this corner over here and you see, you know, you see the, the church and you see the, the condos, like that's just, it's home. I mean, I think that it'll always be home, but I, I, it was, it was more difficult than I thought it was going to be. I knew that I, I wanted to to coach elsewhere and, and, yeah. and be, and be a coach, you know, and, and I'm not saying that, you know, Montague couldn't offer all of that, but it was, you know, I, at some point in time, you get tired of living in that player shadow yeah, and you get tired of, you know, the collarbone jokes and you get, you get, you get, you, get, you know, <laughs> yeah. you no. get, uh, and you get tired of like the 08, 09 talk every time you're around and you're a yeah. product of it. And, and yeah, yeah. you just kind of get tired of it. And, and as a, professional you know you i kind of wanted to you know be a coach you know and be and and be a productive coach and i think you know i was able to do that and i have the opportunity to do that monica gave me my first shot at that but there was another piece of that where um i wanted to go see if i could coach elsewhere like if i could really dive into a community and 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 make an impact in another place with a different kind of platform it's almost like a a a musical artist that has a real big hit or an actor that has known for a role, you, you, you don't want to get stuck in that and you kind of got to break out of that. Right. So I, I think yeah, I completely way to understand it, yeah. that, but yeah. So, you know, you, you had the job at Muskegon, but then the opportunity came up in Georgia when right. you're down in Georgia, like what were the greatest things you learned and you know, how different was it exactly down there compared to what we see here? Yeah. I think that's, that was a, an experience all by itself. Like I'm glad, you know, Right now, last spring at this moment, I, I didn't know what was <laughs> what was going on in three months, like where, where we were going to be. So I, I, I'm glad that this, you know, that's all kind of settled. But I think, yeah, that Muskegon, you know, the OC job, I think that was a, I was going to be a, a career move and, and, and make sure that I can be able to coach in, uh, you know, in an urban setting and, 
and 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 be able to coach elsewhere with it yeah like i said before like a new platform just as a coach and not this ex player who's who is a coach um and then going down going down to georgia i mean yeah and old dean had, had given me a call and you know he had an opportunity there and we all kind of wondered less about what southern high school football is you know as high school football coaches and so we're we're sitting there thinking to us you know thinking like i wonder how the you know south does it in the means of just you know day-to-day routines and 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 weight rooms what do those look like so it was a great opportunity to see so to see those things you know 2400 kids and 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 be able to see the weight room and and be able to see how how they deal with their you know their football infrastructure you know uh and their routines and i would say the the biggest thing is you know the speed is is much different uh i mean you first snap of the scrimmage you can see the speed and a a corner close out on a simple hitch route like you i mean it's just it's it's different Mm -hmm. i mean even from even from d1 ball up here i mean it's a and it's like that everyone's fast, like er, like in the South. Like everyone has, you know, not maybe not the you know the size, but everyone you know has speed. So that that was that was one thing that jumped out to me in the first scrimmage. The other, you know, the the community, the the show that they put on on Friday night from from community to community. That's you know that's a little different than up here too. You know, there's a there's probably more ownership in that. Than there is maybe uh, you know up here that the the from the dance team from the cheerleaders to the to the band yeah, to they're the all community. involved they're all involved the student section they're all involved and they're all in alignment and uh, you know and it's like that from place to place like that's a that's a it's a big deal to them uh, to put that product on for that visiting team coming in um, but yeah those would probably be like the biggest things that kind of stand out and just the overall care personnel. Uh, that the community's put into it. There's a, there's a lot of different bodies that go into, uh, I guess, aligning that football team, go, you know, for Friday nights. It's, yeah. it's pretty impressive. That's awesome. So I guess just transitioning a little, you you know, we we talked about, you know, leaving Montague. You talked about the Muskegon opportunity and then going down south. So now you come back to Puffer, and there's got to be some people in the, in the Muskegon program where there's got to be some people that are, they're going to be gunning for you. Don't you think? I mean, how, how yeah. and I know you, I know your personality. So I, I kind of know what, what you're thinking. Like, let's, let's go get it. Right. Like, but what, what is that? Are you looking forward to those? Right. You almost created a rivalry, like in a sense, right? Like, yeah. Talk uh, a little bit about that. Um, yeah. I mean, I definitely created a rivalry is a good way to put it. Uh, I mean, they're, they're, they're probably not as excited, you know, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, about the RP higher than, 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 you know, some of us were, but, uh, I do, I, 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 if we can do anything that, you know, Muskegon's tradition has done, yeah. we, you know, that'll be a, you know, just within our time there at Reese Puffer, like we can hang our hat, you know, our hat on, you know, and, or our head high and, and put our hat down and, and say, Hey man we clinched something, we, we did something, we made a huge impact in the community. But so if we can just do what they did, we'll be incredibly, you know, excited about just, just that impact. But I do think, yeah, there, it's going to be week three is going to be a little, you know, a, a, a little, it's going to be a tough test because of the product on the field and, and handling a little bit of distraction, you know, with, with what comes with that. And, yeah. and, and the two programs kind of come and colliding together. Uh, you know, and they know each other really well. I mean, there's a lot of Reese Puffer students that, you know, have transferred to Muskegon, you know, in, the, in years past that that are still there. And there's probably a couple of Muskegon students have, that have transferred to Reese Puffer. So there's there's a lot of that kind of, you know, going on that they believe, you know, it's kind of one community. Um, and and it, it is that Muskegon community. But, you know, when these two teams collide on, on week three, we'll, we'll see, you know, kind of what, what happens. But if we can do anything that they've done in, in years past, years past like we'll be incredibly excited about our, it, our impact is, is there enough like you, are you i think you've answered this in some other interview that i probably even asked this question is there enough quote talent enough in muskegon to have three really like powerhouses basically i think uh infrastructure like, you know, wise you guys muskegon yeah. and, and shores yeah muskegon county loves their football so i mean i think they're like reese buffer i know for a fact is really hungry to have the things that those guys have but I don't know if they're, you know, we're, we're trying to align what we want, you know, with the work. 
And so that's yeah. the that's the biggest piece that we're kind of floating on a little bit. And uh, I think once that happens, we'll 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 be excited once we can align those two things. But I I, I will say that I do think that there's enough for all three teams, you know, to, to, to be able to get out of that conference, get out of that county and go make a run in the state. We always said that about the West Michigan conference when we're at Montague, mm-hmm. if we can get out of this conference and we can get out of our, our, our regular season, we're going to be allowed or, or, or we're going to be at least uh, prepared and be a little bit more confident making that run uh, yeah. into the playoff. So I think that's, that's the same thing here. I mean, there's a bunch of teams on the East side that wish they could play Mona Shores and Muskegon every single year. You know, and we have that opportunity being right down the road. Uh, you know, so I think that's that's one thing too that we're really excited about that we get a chance to kind of go up against those guys and okay, see how good we we truly are, um, and 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 see where we are that year. And, and it goes way beyond talent. I mean, talent's you need right. the talent. You yeah, need, you need the Jimmys and the Joes. But right. what are the other things that you think are key to trying to build a program and trying to get it to that level of where those other schools are? Uh, pride. I, I think just pride in our work. And I think that's what we're trying to build at, at Reese Puffer. There's a lot of uh, new administration. There's there's a lot of uh, new building blocks, I guess, foundationally uh, that we're kind of that we're trying to trying to grow off of uh, just in the recent years. And so I think just having that pride for our work and and, and not just showing up in August and, and and trying to piece it together a team, but truly having a program, creating a brotherhood, having a family, you know, of 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 just Reese Puffer. Uh, pride. So I think that's the piece that we're trying to to put together, because um, you you can feel it at Montague, you can feel it, you know, at these other schools that they just they truly have pride for what they do, you know, and they're not so much worried about what other programs or what other communities are doing, but they just know what they're doing and they're trying to build a kind of a wall around that and and build it from within. And you know, I don't I don't really believe in you know beat Shores, you know, beat Muskegon. I don't believe in that that mindset. It's just go Rockets. You know, let's worry about the stuff that we can worry about and our control and, and, and go from there. So I think that's something that, you know, some of the better communities and do. And, and I think that's what we're trying to kind of bring back to, to Reese Puffer is that, that true that true pride. One thing I wanted to bring up, too, kind of on, on a tangent with this is, and, and I want to get Zach involved. We haven't heard much from him today. It's uh, the, te- the team building stuff that, you know, Whitehall baseball, yeah, coaching yeah. Whitehall baseball. Yeah. You went up to the <clears throat> lodge as well as Eagle Village, mm-hmm. and I think what's the Meraki? The Meraki yeah, is the Danny is the, Hunt. Yeah, so, and he yeah. was at Eagle yep. Village before, yep. right? Yeah, so there's Danny's kind of that, that connection. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So if you guys can both discuss that, just, how important just, that is that team building. Just for a record, if you're a tech guy, Meraki means something complete. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just yeah, letting that's you know. Funny. I think it's Greek for like passion mm-hmm. or something. Yeah, C- yeah, Cisco. All of their like small business devices are Meraki devices. Okay, yeah. So I think it's something to do with passion. Yeah, yeah. 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 But could you tell us what, what you got going on with Meraki? And then obviously Zach can speak to this as well, kind of on a similar theme with what Whitehall baseball's done. Yeah, for sure. Right. I think, and and a lot of like Division One athletes have probably gone through you know something similar to these kinds of things but we understand like the mindset of of um you know playing sport is so important and and trying to control those those kinds of things and and make them more aware of their own thoughts and their feelings and 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 those kinds of things i mean like one idea is you know you're you're playing poorly in a in a in a, in a basketball game. And if you were to be a scoreboard watcher, which we don't want those types of guys, but if you were to be a scoreboard watcher and you looked up at the scoreboard and your thoughts ran at the bottom of the scoreboard telling you everybody what you're thinking about yourself or your coaches or, you know, whatever the game is, you know, are they productive? Like, are they helping us, you know, get to where we want to be? So, I mean, like we, we do a lot of this on Wednesdays. We do a lot of character building and we do a lot of um, team building in the, in, in the team, in, in the terms of, you know, using what Meraki has kind of laid as a foundation for us. So like, like we're like our, one of our slogans this year is close the gap, but like the other piece of that, like, what is, what is a team, you know, and a team isn't, everyone thinks it's result oriented to win, but it's more along the lines of just maximizing our ability and being at peace with our work. So like, that's what we're trying to build within the program is just be at peace with your work. Like you can't expect yourself to go be, you know, like the Muskegans and the Mona Shores and, you know, these these kinds of teams in our, in our County, you know, if you haven't prepared and put the work in and, and so you you want to do whatever you got to do, like the pain of prep or the pain of regret, you know, like that's something that we always use that Montague girls basketball program, you know, are you, are you willing to prepare? And then are you willing to chase it? Are you willing to go into the darkness that you, you, you might not ever get out? Are you willing to chase this 
winning thing because it has no justice. Winning has zero justice. Like they don't, winning does not care who you are. Like winning, winning does not care how much work you've really put in, but are you willing to chase this thing into a darkness and, and might not ever get to that, that victory? So those are things that we we're passionate about, obviously, uh, and, 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 and the, and the football program, but those are things that we are always trying to get across because that mindset piece of being up in Victor's, Victor's edge, you know, uh, Prudhomme did, did a great job up there. Now Danny has kind of gone off on his own, Danny Hunt with Meraki and he came over and he laid a great foundation. And I'm telling you, we had like 17, 18 kids, a lot of seniors in uh, on that meeting and they walked away with, you know, understanding, character development helps the process, which helps that result. And, and we, and I'm really bad with it, these types of characteristics and I want to learn how to grow those characteristics so that I can help succeed and help be a little bit better. So but, Cody, what's yeah. your definition of success? What does success look like for you? I think success is peace, you know, um, just knowing like, it's not a result. Like I, I don't, I don't believe in results as, as success because, you know, even I, I had to learn that the hard way with girls basketball because, you know, I went in there thinking I was a really good coach, uh, because you I, were, because I mean, I, you were a good coach because I, well, just because I played the sport, I thought I was going to be a good coach yeah, and I got exposed yeah. and I was such a bad coach, uh, for those like first two, two, two and a half years, I would think, you know, say, and then I dove into a lot of reading, dove into a lot of different podcasts and just figured out like, how can I, how can I build a program that's like not understanding that if we lose that we have to have a bad bus ride home, you know, like how can I build a program where, you know, we did our best, we prepared, we didn't win certain moments, you know, let's learn from them and let's move forward. So, um, that's really what I started focusing on. So I, I, I knew, you know, it would have been awesome to win a state championship as a girls basketball coach. But I also knew like what the other talent was around, uh, right. you know, with these other private schools around the area and what that looked like. So it was like, but how can we truly feel successful, you know, without winning a state championship? And that's what I started, you know, kind of getting into the to the weeds with. And uh, I think that that is where I've, you know, figured out, all right, it's, it's going to be the character and, and, and developing that character that they're going to be like right now, we're trying to create all American dads at Reese Puffer, you know, and then when we're at Montague, we're, we're trying to create, you know, high level citizens that know how to serve and, 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 and give back to their community. So those were the things that we're focusing on. And if we can focus on those things, and obviously, I mean, you guys know at the table that I can be pretty competitive too. Uh, and that's going to take place, you know, you know? uh, <laughs> so that's going to take place. And, 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 but if we can really truly focus on those things and I know, yeah, Victor's edge, like that's that the stuff that they were doing there was, you know, phenomenal and, and kind of the first of its kind in this area. So, you know, they were doing a great job, but I, yeah. you know, I'll be, oh, I'm sorry, Scott. No, I was just going to say, cause I, I meant to pull Zach into this too, cause I just wanted his quick thoughts on it and also shameless plug. For us, because we're going to have a piece coming out on that um, with what Whitehall Baseball did up there. Can you kind of just shed light on what happens up there and what what that does, what can, how that can pull a team closer together? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, Cody, I think you covered covered a huge chunk of it for sure. So a lot of it's going to be uh, repetitive. I think that the the main point in all of this is that. <clears throat> Uh, sports in general, uh, they act as a, a more or less like a simulation of life. For sure, right? like they they, were, they are the same. They're one and the same on a, on a smaller level and a larger level. Um, so character development and growth and and all these things that we talk about are mutually beneficial in both things. And we take sports a lot of times and we we use the use it as a a terminal to teach some of these, you yeah, know, some, some of these, some of these uh, develop developmental uh, characteristics, and in turn, we hope that they apply those in in the re the real world. And I think that um, the the retreats that we do and um, the the different events or different things that we that we do in practice, Eagle Village is a good example of that. Uh, always encompass the things that are most important to 
to our program specifically or, to, you know, to athletics, to what we what we value in athletics, and that's uh, the growth of individuals. And that will help you become a better athlete, and that will help you become a better person in the real world. And I think that's that's uh, fundamentally what, what we emphasize enough. Like I said, I don't want to go into a ton of the, the details. Cody covered yeah. a huge chunk of it, but that's – that's where our, our heads are always at. And I think that that gets lost a lot of time. You know, people, people forget that they get so caught up in, in the results, right. That, that we forget, um, our results come. Yeah. Results we, come. We if forget what the, right the important yeah. stuff, yeah. right. And process oriented, right. Process oriented. Right. Scott's <laughs> looking at God, it. I yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, we're, we're the, yeah, we're the same way. I mean, I mean, it's uh Brett Ledbetter from what drives winning. There's a lot of stuff that, you know, off of that. And, you know, I, I think the big piece of that is is characteristics. There's moral and per performance characteristics. You know, as coaches, we're always kind of focused on those performance characteristics, you know, but now we're starting to get a little bit more focused on moral characteristics. You know, what is honesty? What is trustworthy? What is, you know, social awareness? Like those kinds of things. And that's building up that whole athlete, you know, or the whole human you know, and if we can really focus on building that whole human, they're going to be yeah. They drive the performance. Yeah, yeah they're, 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 that those things are going to drive that process, and and hopefully the coaches can get it right. And Cody, you know, I have right an spots. opening on our staff, right? Yeah, yeah you do. Yeah, that's what. Yeah, that's <laughs> what I heard. That's <laughs> what I heard. Yeah, yeah, huge shoes, <laughs> so long what, nights. Yeah, 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 so yeah. you mentioned books, and these guys yeah. know I'm a like a voracious reader. Actually, I got to check that because my boys, the, I'm a listener, right? Like I. I Audible, audio you know yeah, yeah, i yeah, just yeah, listen yeah. nonstop. what's your favorite book chase the lion uh you know i'm and i'm not religious by any means yeah um but yeah just learning how to dream big i mean i think that's that's the big thing you know in in my world i've always been a dreamer uh you know even like with ho homes and houses i could dream about them uh, i gotta call my dad to do the work <laughs> and my brother to do the work but uh i'm kind of a waste when it comes to those kinds of things but um i do think yeah chase the line I, I that that was a huge impact on me i just read quiet strength you know i know it's an older book with with tony dungy but that i re read that over spring break that was you know that was a solid book in, in the means of where i'm at right now kind of building yeah. a a program and a culture didn't really know it at the time and opened that book and yeah w was able to finish it in a few days and uh, that that book is has made an impact on me now as well and now as i'm kind of in the, the build right you know uh and kind of in the weeds right now nice yeah I, what about I gotta, you i got a good list oh yeah. man i don't have a favorite i yeah yeah i'm reading dare to lead right now with uh Brene Brown, which I listened to a lot of that on the flight, which is really good. That goes a lot of the same things. Uh, if you really want a book to make you think, and Zach's going to laugh and Scott's going to laugh, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Yep. Um, I, I mean, principle-based living and like, mm -hmm. it's, it's really, really, really good if you haven't, it's not sports-based, but it's leadership-based. Right. And, uh, it gets really down into the personal stuff that you talk about, but yeah, uh, I got about three going right now. So, uh, but yeah, I can't do that. I, yeah, no, I even <laughs> one at a time. Yeah, yeah. I can't really either. I get them mixed yeah. up in yeah. three yeah. chapters. Yeah. 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 So yeah. we we're big here on you know like uh, our leadership team where we all go through something together. Um, you know, I, we're doing seven habits right now, so I've probably read that three or four times, but it's the first time for a lot of the guys, a lot of the team, and. So then somebody else in one of their one-on-ones might be, you know, um, Extreme Ownership, great book yep. too. Uh, right. Jocko yeah. Willick is yep. a gets up great at, book. He gets up at four in the morning four, too. Yep. Yeah, crazy. Takes a picture of his crazy. watch yeah. and all that. Stupid. Post, posted on <laughs> Instagram and Twitter. Yeah. Se Seals <laughs> and Navy guys, they're, yeah. they're a, little, a little off. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so I mean, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll shoot you text with my list. I got a right. bunch of them. So. Yeah, we're reading Chop Wood, Carry Water uh, as, 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 a, as just as a program. Um, you know, throughout the summer, so the, the kids are going to be reading that. Am I allowed to chime in? With yeah, my favorite chime book? in. Yeah. Jesus, I don't sorry. want to because it goes back to when I was like ten years old. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> I was a big movie guy back then. Yeah. Big movie guy. So, no, I, so seriously, I was gonna, the books we do now, they, I get a lot out of them. Yeah, they're really great. Um, they are good. Uh, I, I'm always going to put a shameless plug in for Pat Lencioni. Uh, yeah. If you ideal team player, five dysfunctions of a team, anything he's got about 20 books. The dysfunctions of a team, I think I've like tapped into. Oh, dude, yeah, that's okay. a great. That, yeah. It's that really good. simple, really mm -hmm. easy stuff, but it's the little things that are hard. And so, yeah, it's it's really good. Do the ordinary things better than any other team in the and county. That's, yeah. Ask, yeah. ask those Reese Puffers, you know, yeah, yeah, football players good. about mm -hmm. that. That's good. That's yeah. good. So. Um, yeah, so I guess like what's your what's your record going to be next year? Oh gosh. No. 
or result How'd you oriented. Like that one? <laughs> How'd you like that one? Um, no, I, I we'll see, man. I, I just hope to go one and zero and at home. I mean, that's that. Man, man you're turning, well. You are well hey, schooled. Hey, we're turning the corner right now. We're I'm starting to get a little bit anxious, uh, you know, just with the summer and the summer prep. Yeah. And, and we've got a lot of you know a lot of things on our calendar. Well, so, so, like when you go to your team, what are the, what are the three most important things that you're working on right now? Like with them, you know. Wait, what are you harping on? Little things like what? What are those? Types? Yeah, so I, I yeah do the ordinary things better than any other team in the county. So yep. we're talking about closing the gap in the county. You know, then there's obviously a, a gap. Yeah. Uh, you know, with the two teams that we play with in the county, but we we're also not. The, we were the only school in the county that did not make the playoffs last year too. Yeah. So um, you know, so as we're talking about closing the gap in the county, we're we're trying to do whatever we can do um, to do that. And one way to do that is do the ordinary things better than anybody else. So the high fives. Yeah. Like we start out with three, three hugs and change the culture. I, I guess I'm giving all my secrets away now, but, uh, you know, we, we start out, uh, you know, a lot of our class time and, and a lot of our football time, you know, you know, talking about care, talking about those kinds of things. And, and one way that we can serve others and one way we can, you know, show that we're trustworthy, uh, is, is to be able to, you know, work on that proximity piece. And, and so those are things that we're talking about. I think, you know, if, if we're talking about like three things that we focus on every single day, I mean, it's, it's attendance. Uh, like, because I think once we, 80% is being there. Yeah. Once, I mean, once we get there, then, you know, I think we're, our kids work hard. Yeah. You know, it's not like they're, they're taking a bunch of shortcuts. So attendance has been really, really, you know, a big deal uh, as of late. Um, you know, and then the next piece is, yeah, you know, I guess a part of that is bringing a friend, <laughs> like, why don't you know where he's at? You know, like we need to, everyone, I don't care. Like if I know where he's at, I need you guys, you're the right. team. So you guys need to know where he's at. So the attendance piece has been, you know, been a really big, big deal. But then the service piece, you know, uh, just trying to make sure that we're, we're serving, serving our teammates and serving our community and, you know, serving our coaches and coaches are serving one another. I think that's a really big deal as well. So, um, and that thing, uh, you know, and then we got to give best effort every, every single every single time, you know, best effort all of the time. So, yeah. So it's become a, a little bit of a white Lake South at Reese Puffer. Right. Right. Yeah. With uh, you and Artema and then yeah. obviously Cliff Sandy. So, yep. yeah. I mean, what's that whole dynamic been like with the three of you guys, man? I mean, they're, they're both Whitehall guys, uh, you know, <laughs> nothing against, you know, uh, but, uh, um, so, I mean, that's already been a kind of a different dynamic and, and I've always kind of built a wall where every, with every team that I've kind of been on, you know, so like I didn't have much, you know, you know relationships with, Whitehall, um, coaching staff or anything along those lines. Um, you know, so it's nice to kind of get to know them. Uh, and, and we're all on the same team now we're working forward, but, uh, yeah, Cliff has been awesome to work with. I mean, he's, he's mentored me, even if he doesn't know it, um, in, in more ways than one, he, he, he's, he's really helped me a, a ton, you know, be able to get my feet on the ground. And then, and, and then Nate, uh, and I actually coach, uh, or I teach a you know, team teach our football class or weight training class. So he and I get a lot of, a lot of time to spend together. And I think that's a great way for the kids to see the football coach and the basketball coach kind of intermingling and, and laughing and having a good time. Yeah. And, and, and he gets to hear the things that I'm saying. I get to hear the things that he's saying. So we're really getting to know, you know, one another and the means of, you know, just the coaching philosophies and, and how we, you know, treat kids and, 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 and how we're, where we're trying to, you know, bring this thing and we're on the same page with trying to make it elite. Um, but, you know, and I think we are, you know, we, we're going to, we're getting there. We're, we have a really solid foundation with our administration. And, and then obviously, you know, Cliff has, has done a great job of bringing a ton of new coaches in, uh, younger coaches too. So, I mean, we're all kind of. What's wrong with the old guys? No, <laughs> you know, nothing, nothing's wrong with the old guys. You know, uh, you're getting there now, you know, right? uh, like, okay. oh, and I, I know. <laughs> I, I hear some of these other coaches speak, you know, that are like 24, 25. I'm like, man, I remember, you know, and, but. How you old know, are you now? 30 only. Oh you know, yeah. my so, gosh. But there the is big a. three oh. Yeah, there is a downhill. piece. I got to, I, I mean, Montague gave me a great opportunity, man. At like 23, 24 years old, I was a head coach, so. Yeah. Uh, I got thrown into the fire and I had to kind of grow from that. Um, you know, and these guys are going through some of the same types of pains, uh, you know, as being just new coaches. So I, I think, you know, yeah, again, Cliff has done a great job of, of kind of, you know, establishing a culture and then trying to create a little bit of change, um, you know, in, in, the, in the right spots. And, and yeah, and, and then Nate too. I mean, he's he's got a really good team coming through, man. Yeah, well, you uh, talk about synergy like, too, which I think is really important. Yeah. 
how about sharing players too? Because there's yeah. some stud athletes there. coming through there now that yeah. I'm sure that could really help you I'm, as well. I'm recruiting like crazy in our hallways, <laughs> man. I'm recruiting that class too. I mean, there's some, you know, the Jackson Whitakers, the Travis Ambrose is like, those dudes are stud basketball players. I mean, Jackson's a stud uh, baseball player too. I mean, he just jacked a homer, you know, over his first one as a sophomore uh, in that county meet. So, I mean, he, he's a really, you know, solid athlete. Um, tall, long, both those guys. So, you know, Clyde Barty as well. I mean, he's he's another one that, that plays for Reese Puffer uh, basketball and we're trying, you know, getting him out for football. He would really help as well. So, I mean, there's there's three names right there that I'm still recruiting. So hopefully they listen to this podcast. Um, now you've got but, uh, the Vanderlees yeah. kid. How's he been? Is he Like I was going to ask next, who's emerged yeah. as leaders among the player group? Oh. Who are the kids? Is he one of them? Uh, Tate, yeah, Tate, we're, we're trying to get him to, to speak, uh, open mm-hmm. his mouth and lead because he's such a, a do by example. Uh, and he's probably done that his entire life, but now, you know, now he's into that senior leadership role where we've got to be able to kind of get him, um, get him to kind of open up and, 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 and lead through words as well. Uh, but we're going to coach through Tate, man. Tate is a, is a ball player. And if I can coach through Tate and I can get on Tate, I'm going to be able to get on all the rest of the team. So, uh, and Tate knows that Tate wants to get coached and Tate wants to be elite, wants to get to the next level. A bunch of college coaches has been through, uh, Reese, I mean, I, yeah, we've probably had eight or nine coaches come through Reese Puffer already um, and all kind of to take a peek at him. And he's he's just going to have to go run for him, you know, and, and, and they want to see him run. They want to see him run routes and catch the ball. And 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 then, you know, I think there, there are going to be a few that come his way. I, you know, there's people that are saying that he's the best one in our conference and best one in the county. So, I mean, he's going to have to show me, uh, you know, his tape, his tape doesn't really, you know, show me and I don't really believe in tape. So, I mean, he's, he's going to have to really, really get out there and, and, and kind of, you know, show what he's, he's all about. For yeah. those who don't know, that's the son of Rob Vanderlees who played yeah. Muskegon Catholic and then U of M. Yeah. So yeah, he's got, got the bloodlines. Yep. And his sister, I think played at Davenport. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah, there, yep. so, I mean, she, or, I mean, he, he's, he has the bloodlines for that, but I mean, yeah, he, he was out there this morning, man. You know, you know, we're at six fifteen, six twenty on the, you know, on the field, and you know, he's ready to roll. Like he's, he just, he just wants to get better, and it's, it's, he's a lot of fun. I kind of reference him, you know, as like kind of a golden retriever. He's just, he's just one of the tails wagging, you know, all the time. He just wants to do right, and he's a hard worker. And, and I don't know if he knows how good he is. Uh, yeah, those are the best so, ones. Sometimes, yeah, you know, exactly. So he's he's going to continue to work and and get coached, and we're going to coach through him, and and he's prepared for that. What's his height and weight now? He's six three, two hundred five. Yeah, so good, I mean, good, yeah, he's a good frame. Yeah, on that kid. huge, huge frame, and he's gotten faster. Um, you know, he's been doing a lot of training after school and in, in class, and his his numbers are going up. So I mean, he's oh, he's. Yeah, he's working his he's working his butt off, but he knows how important this time is, you know, to kind of get ready for this this summer. And then was it is it Brody? Let's yeah, get back to he was yep, a Brody Johnson. He's a really good running back last yep, year. Yeah, going to be a sophomore. I love Scott or, the camp. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's a sophomore. He was good. He had a nice sophomore. He's going to be year. junior. He had a thousand yards and he sat yeah. out like two games. So, yeah. um, you know, he's going to be a, he's going to have a, a great opportunity to kind of run the stuff that we run. Um, you know, and then we, we have, we have a, that June going to be junior class, class of 24 is, you know, pretty deep in the means of just football first guys and, uh, you know, guys that really enjoyed the sport, you know, so they're willing to kind of do extra. And that's what we're trying to create a culture of is extra, uh, yeah. just getting used to it. So he, he does a really good job. Um, Brody does that kind of, you know, being a, being a, a Dubai example guy too, but we are, we've got a few guys, man, that, uh, you know, they, I don't think they know how good they are yet, but, or how strong they are, but I'm okay with that. You know, I was telling Scott earlier that I, I feel like we're all, all of us in the Reese Puffer football program, we're all like this baby lions. Like we're like little cubs, like in the weeds and we want to go after the largest gazelle, you know, and we, we, cause we think we can, but like, then we got to kind of readjust our, our mind and be like, okay, let's just worry about right now, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, and in, in, in this moment. Yep. Nice. So uh, one thing I, I think we haven't talked about yet is uh, your pickleball game. Oh, gosh. So uh, I don't know. For the record here, Cody has thrown down the gauntlet, much like Frank. I don't know if Frank listens to our podcast, but he's going to get a butt whooping too. Oh, so geez. like, uh, Cody, whenever you're ready, you get your paddle brushed off. And Actually, it's in my truck. Is it really? Yeah, it's in my <laughs> truck. Yeah. Is that when you... Tr- Crossed over into old man. Dumb. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and golf. Whoa, yeah, yeah. whoa. We're. Uh, uh, I will <laughs> hey, say. Right I will you. say pickleball though is is a, is a ton of fun. I mean, it is fun. Who wins between you and Tony and Ace? 
in pickleball? Oh, I'll beat him every single time. I mean, Tony and I, Tony and I go back and forth too. I think it was like three years ago at a Veer camp. You know, he told me he was going to come pick me up. I'm coming to pick you up type of thing. We're going to go play pickleball. And I'm like, wait, like, really? Like, I'm, I'm ready if we're ready to go. He's like, no, we're going to beat dubs, you know, <laughs> but, uh, but you know, so like, you know, he and he and I kind of go back and forth on the same thing, but I mean, yeah, it's just, it's a, it's a lot of fun. I'm, I'm all in on it. We're going to probably start doing that in the summer just as a coaching staff. We were talking about trying to find a, trying to find a league, yeah. trying to yeah. set something up. It would be, yeah, it'd, be, it'd, be, it'd, be it'd be a blast. Like, like a midday league, you know, yeah. like I can't wake up too, too early, you know, to go play some pickleball. I've I walked into the Montague yeah. gym and seen him playing before he goes, don't oh, yeah. put this on video. Please. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so I mean, I, some fun. I'll be honest with you. Some of my best memories is having uh, Ken Diamond as a gym coach, and like he, uh, we badminton, uh, pickleball, we played ping pong, and like Ken, you knew he was getting serious when he come in. He had a graphite badminton right. racket, yeah. and I'm so you give him a little challenge, and he'd come in. It, for the record, I did beat Ken numerous times in ping pong uh, oh, and okay. pickleball. He did get me in badminton. He was really good at. Badminton. I feel like you'd be great at you know those kinds of sports. What does that mean, Cody? He's got the low uh, You know where I'm gravity. going with this. <laughs> <laughs> so you mean? What's uh, that? Yes, Cody. Yeah. I'm an athlete. Yeah. I've always I've yeah. always been able Hand to hand-eye coordination. You know right. those things. Jeez. You don't have to jump off the She's floor. She's not all of us are <laughs> six foot three and yeah. you know. No, you're, uh, you're still pretty nimble, aren't you? Uh, no, I wouldn't call myself nimble. <laughs> I would call myself old and crotchety. Right. No, I, yeah, no, I, I overachieved for my athletic ability my whole life. That's probably the best way to put it. So anticipation goes a long way. Yeah, it doesn't just matter how true. big Don't you be are. scared, you know? Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, d- golf is a, is a good sport to keep going when you're old. Although I was, I was told by my kids, I don't turn very well anymore. And so like Connor was saying that yesterday, geez, man, if my dad could turn, he could geez, the crap Pete. out of the ball. I don't need to hit the crap out of the ball to beat him. <laughs> Ask him about what happened the last right. few times we played. But yeah. I also feel like I don't want too many cues in golf. Like don't, you yeah. know, don't coach me because <laughs> yes, this is, it, is. it could get much worse. Yeah, it <laughs> is. It is. It it's, uh, yeah. it's definitely one of those sports. I think for me, like playing golf and I've probably told you guys this, like, Every other sport you play, you go harder and you, it, like, you can shoot poorly, play better defense, rebound better. You, you know, football, they hit harder, right? Like, I think baseball is a little like this too, in, in some instances, right? Yeah. Like, with golf, you have to, like, not. You, you have to, like, if you blow up on a hole, you, it's got, like, Ted Lasso, it'd be a goldfish, right? Like, you, you have to completely forget about it and just be relaxed. Mm-hmm. And that, that that was the hardest thing for me for years with golf. Like, you know, I'd go out, I'd have four or five pars in a row, and then all of a sudden it's like, yeah. and the wheels just come off, you know? So my kids are still struggling through that right now, both of them. Owen specifically, like, he he struggles with that. Well, I think being tough is doing the next right thing. So, like, when we, when we say, hey, when we define toughness, like, it's not about how hard you yeah. take a hit or anything. Yep. It's doing the next right thing. And Mental. that just shows you yeah. how tough I'm not because I'm <laughs> the same way in golf. Uh, I would say baseball know. is similar to golf in that. Yeah, you, it is. If, yeah, if I would you start say so. pressing, then you're not, you're not going to yeah. do well. Yeah, yeah, yeah you, you, stop, you stop swinging freely. You stop anticipating you be loose. Well, well, there's yeah. a lot, and there's a lot of failure, too, just naturally, like the game itself, right? Like, you just don't. Yeah. You don't get hits a lot of time. That's the way it goes. Like you're yeah, going to make errors. Of, one out of three is considered success yeah. Yeah. as far and, as batting goes. Yeah, and figure out how to balance that. You know, right. I think that's the key, how to balance that. I got to move on, but also yeah. this is important. Right. So what's I, your I handicap now? This. What do you think you're at? Oh, I'm still like a plus eight, plus nine. Per nine? Yeah. I mean, I'm not. That's not bad. I mean, yeah, but I'm not like... Yeah, I'm not. Is that real plus nine or what? Yeah, I know you. That's real plus nine. Like, there's so many guys, I don't know why they they push their handicap down and they're, Oh, I'm a 10. You go and play with them. And they're like, I started at like, a, I started at like a 18. Yeah. Like that's, you know, that's pretty good, like man. Three or four years. You hit ago. the ball a long ways. No, that's the thing. Like really? my brother can crush it. Yeah. And, and so everyone believes that, you know, when I come up, like I'm going to crush it. No, I'm not. Yeah. I, I try to keep it in, in front as much as possible. I'll, t- I'll be honest with you. Derek Jacobson is the most amazing thing I've ever seen. You know, Derek DJ. He went to Whitehall. He was an all-state golfer, I think. Yeah, he was. DJ is, he, was he 5'4"? 5'3". Oh, he, he, yeah. he hits the golf ball farther than, like, absolutely just. But it's like he, like the club hits his back foot when he takes I'm like, mm. how do you get back to square? I don't get it. But Yeah, know. he's nuts, man. No. So you can't beat Derek? No. Yeah. I, my, my brother Derek? Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can yeah. get Derek? Yeah, I think I can do it. I played with Derek a couple years ago. Yeah. I can't remember what it was. It might have been the one club or something like that. Yeah. So, so um, are you, you're teaching in the district then at Reese Buffer? Yeah, I'm a student success coordinator. So I'm okay. basically a freshman advocate. Oh, nice. Um, you know, so I think that's the other piece of it. Like professionally, I think I referenced it before, but yeah, just professionally, it's... It's, you know, I, I like working with, you know, that type of kid that, you know, got to do a little bit of problem solving and, and figure out uh, how to get them on track. Um, you know, that so that part has been actually really rewarding um, within Good. the district. The only, you know, piece of it that I'm missing is the classroom. Like I'm so, I've been, you know, the last seven years I've been in a classroom um, and now I'm not, uh, you know, I'm kind of in and out of classrooms and I'm, I'm more of a one-on-one, you know, one-on-two, you know, deal. And so now it's that, that piece is... You know, I am missing that, but I get that out of my football, uh, yeah. you know, class. But that, yeah, that's our, that's my day job, and, and, and yeah, it's it, it's and, incredibly rewarding. Any advice for Zach? I mean, that's was that's why Zach is abandoning catch mark. And yep. Later, later, to later see his yeah. Um, uh, yeah. The advice. Uh, the you know, advi- I love you, Zach. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the advice I would give. Um, yeah, preparation goes a long way, especially early on. I um, agree with that. Yeah, you know, and just being just being prepared for the what if situations, and 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 making sure that you're ready to roll. And then you know, knowing you, you the relationship side will just come. You know, like yeah. I, I, I I'm a big relationships guy as well. But I mean, that part is just interesting to me. So I'm, uh, you know, I'm I'm very passionate about getting that person to, you know, like. Yeah. you know, or, or enjoy sure. this environment. So, I mean, the relationship sides will go a long way too. Then you'll, then you'll be able to get things out of certain students that you never thought you'd be able to, you know, be able to get out and then you make an impact. And I think that's the biggest thing that we all are kind of reaching for is, you know, make an impact on youth and, and serve others. And, and, and those are our gifts. So I, you know, I can't serve others by building a home, I, you know, no one would want to live in that house. So <laughs> I, like my, you know, yeah. the way I can serve others is, you know, through, through athletics and, you know, you know, through, through education, because that's really all I know. Speaking of where are you living? I'm living in my parents' basement. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) My my wife is, um, you know, working remote as well. So she's there all day. What what does Hannah do? So she works at Mocha. Um, She's like an executive assistant. She works with the marketing and the online and all that type of stuff. Um, and so she's, yeah, but she's remote. So that <laughs> kind of tough for her. Cause I'm, I'm probably like a, you know, six thirty to six thirty guy, you know, every single day. And, you know, she's, she's at home a lot by herself, you know, with my, with my, with my parents, my, both my parents are, are retired and the, and the, and the four dogs, um, that are running around the house. But yeah, we're, we're, we're still kind of searching a little bit, yeah. uh, for home. It's a tough and market. It's, it is a very tough market. So we're, you know, now we're kind of expanding where we were first looking just to be able to kind of land a spot mm-hmm. that we don't feel like we're going to lose, lose out, uh, on a bunch of money on. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. I know, I know some coaching gigs that she might be able to grab if, uh, She's ever interested to, right. to spend some free time. Yeah, I know. She's she loves sport, but I don't know if she uh <laughs> she would enjoy coaching, you know. Yeah, assistant, uh, you're not yeah. the head coach. You yeah. can just be chill and right. cool. But yeah, right, no. right, right. Um no, well uh, guys, any other questions? I mean, I think oh, we've no, hit kind not. of our, right. our hour mark. So yeah. Cody, I'll tell you what, um, you probably you don't get this enough. Uh, I'm real proud of everything you've done. Uh, it's it's good to be a guy that's from Montague and see somebody like you have success. Um, from my perspective, it's even better. I have a lot of opinions these guys would tell you on leadership and culture and teamwork to to just hear the growth right in, in you. Um, and uh, you know, we wish you the best of luck with Reese Puffer, and maybe we'll get out there to to stream some games for you this year. So um, this has been episode 27 of the Catch Mark Sportsnet podcast with Cody Cater. And thanks to my co-hosts, Scott and Zach. I appreciate it, guys. Yep, see you later, everyone. Yep. Thanks for having me on it. Go Rockets. No problem. Go go Cats. (laughs) (laughs) Zach, anything? No dogs, no bikes? No. All right. Talk to you guys later.